Hey, Fort Niners fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Chat Sports, and today, let's put a grade. I know, we're all excited on the San Francisco 49ers' massive 34-31 win over the Rams, which eliminates the Rams from the playoffs and also gets us one step closer to winning the NFC West and possibly still being the number one overall seed. We're going to start with the playoff picture, and then we're going to jump into my individual grades as well as offense, defense, special teams. You know the drill here on the 49ers channel. Okay, starting with... The NFC playoff picture, again, one step closer to the number one overall seed. Again, because it's Saturday, we still got to wait and see what happens on Sunday, <laughs> excuse me, and on Monday with the Vikings. But, and also, side note, I'm recording this on Saturday night right after the game. So this can all change depending on when you watch this video. But right now, the Niners would be the one seed at 12-3. and three. The Packers, Saints are also going to be the 2-3 and three seeds at 11-3. and three. Cowboys are 7-7. Seven and seven. It could be Philadelphia based on what happens tomorrow. Seahawks right now 11 and 3, and then the Vikings 10 and 4. Remember, Seattle's taking on the Cardinals on Sunday. And again, depending on when you watch this video, we're recording it on a Saturday. And of course, there are still games to play on Sunday. But basically, what you need to know here is even though the Niners won and they're the one seed right now, it can all change. And really, it's going to come down to next week in Seattle as they take on the Seahawks for what will be the battle for the NFC West. Even if the Seahawks were to lose. Next, or, or tomorrow or Sunday, technically, against the Cardinals. They still have the inside track. Again, they just have to beat us to be able to be the NFC West champs. What this does for the 49ers, though, in winning against the Rams, it doesn't really allow them to be that much closer to, to the one seed. And basically, sure fire, if they were to win next week against Seattle, they're going to be the one seed because they hold the tiebreaker, tiebreaker excuse me, over the Packers and the Saints. So, tonight doesn't fully affect the NFC West standings because you still got to win next week, but it is very, very important to go ahead and try and get the number one seed locked up because, again, the Packers and Saints both have lost to us already. So this does mean, especially on Monday night, all of, uh, I guess, us here in the 49er land should be rooting for the Vikings to hopefully beat the Packers because that will most likely lock us up as the one seed if we go ahead and beat the Seahawks next week. Packers losing would just be good overall for the 49ers. All right. Before we move on, be a quick ad here on YouTube. No worries. Scroll down, let it play. Answer this question before we do the grades. Who gets the game ball for the win, the 34-31? I mean, it was as big of a win as you can possibly hope for. I get team, the team struggled a lot, but I want to know who you guys think should get the game ball. Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, let's go ahead and start with the offense. We're going to give them a B+. Listen, they started off pretty bad. I was very, very worried early on in this football game. They're playing against a good team and a good defense. We know that. Ramsey and Donald, we know how good they are up front. They did give up six sacks. They didn't run the football, and yet still, they were able to put up 27 points. Again, you know, you got the extra points there because of the pick six by Jared Goff, but overall, I'm still concerned about the wide receivers. There was nothing, essentially, from Emmanuel Sanders until his one Busted coverage, deep ball catch. George Kittle was good. A great touchdown catch on the on the, the touchdown drive. A couple of big conversions on that drive as well. Jimmy Garoppolo made the big throws when he needed to, but still, six sacks by the offensive line. Under 100 yards rushing. No Matt Breida. Basically, no Tevin Coleman either. And the receivers not wor working well. That's one way to look at this. And the other way to look at it is that even with the offense not clicking on all cylinders, Garoppolo still played well enough to win. Now, Jimmy G, he's going to get his own individual grade. Those interceptions were pretty bad, but we got to give him a B plus because they turned things around, especially in that second quarter and into the second half. And they had the game-winning drive, and really the go-ahead drive as well. That was as as clutch as, as can be. The Niners have continued to, continued to show this season they can get behind, they can get in shootouts, and they're able to climb, climb back into games and get big wins. Hats off to them. The sacks were a concern. They did rush. I said earlier they didn't rush. They did rush for 119 total yards. Didn't feel like it because no rusher had more than, I think, 60 yards is where Mostert was sitting at. But overall, they did play well enough to win. They obviously did win, and they were great late, which is what is very, very important. I'm a little concerned still with the offense, but not as concerned as I am with the defense. They get a C-. minus. They continue to struggle once again. And zero sacks once again is what's so hard to believe. I went back and watched... A couple of the series from the Rams right after the game ended. And I kept thinking, like, they had to have gotten a sack somewhere because the stats say they had zero. Nope, no sacks. Literally at all. Yes, Fred Warner had the big pick six. We know how great he is. He's going to be a Pro Bowl alternate. Might start in the Pro Bowl. You never know what happens with the other two uh, linebackers. Maybe Bob, Bobby Wagner and Luke Keekley Could be starting in the Pro Bowl if, uh, if the alternate thing comes through. The secondary got torched, though. Robert Woods had over 100 yards receiving. Tyler Higby had over 100 yards receiving from the tight end spot. Greenlaw is struggling. Witherspoon is struggling. And when this team is not getting sacks, 
the defense starts to get exposed. And I know, deep boards out. Still, you would think that Armstead, who was a Pro Bowl's, you know, uh, snub, I guess you can say, and of course, maybe Defensive Rookie of the Year, hopeful in terms of Nick Bosa would be able to get some pressure. They got pressure, but unable to get sacks. The defense is really starting to concern me overall. It's Jared Goff, 323 total yards. They were also 3-for-3 three three in the red zone. Again, zero sacks. The defense, I don't know. Again, well, well, well enough to win, right? But they still gave up 31 points and at the end. They had a chance to lose the game as well. So the defense has got to start to figure things out. I'm very, very concerned about them overall. You know what I'm not concerned about? Betting on our 49ers. Every single time they've lost, they've won the next week. I told you guys to use our promo code for BetDSI, chatsports.com forward slash bet, promo code 49ers to bet on this game. If you did, you probably made some money. If you did not, well, it's another game next week. Chatsports.com forward slash bet, promo code 49ers there at BetDSI. One of our best sponsors here for Chat Sports and a way for you guys to bet on the 49ers and make some money. The promo code gives you 120% deposit bonus whenever you sign up for the first time. All right, special, special teams, nothing that special. Robbie Gold was two for two. He hit the game-winning field goal. No worries there. We'll give him a minus because, again, they're not returning kicks for touchdowns, but we haven't expected that all year long. So A, A minus is fine. We always breeze by, breeze by special teams as long as Gold makes his kicks, which he did. That is really all that matters. Okay, individual grade starting with Jimmy Garoppolo, C+. Plus. I'm going to be harsh on Jimmy Garoppolo. He was not good in this football game. Yes, he was under pressure. Yes, he did make some really good throws, but he also had two interceptions in the Jalen Ramsey one. You're like, Jimmy, why are we doing this? I'm just looking ahead to the postseason, so I'm being nitpicky. I'm being a little negative right now because I do worry about how the team is going to perform in the postseason. Could a performance like Jimmy Garoppolo had, 16 of 27, two picks and one late touchdown, could that win in the postseason? Sure, but it can also lose you football games. I want the four touchdowns, Jimmy Garoppolo, not the two interceptions, Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay, let me just be very, very clear. Don't you guys want that? Again, I think he's going to be fine. I'm not going to overly panic. I've said before, I'm 100% behind Jimmy Garoppolo. This just was not a great game, and a C-plus is what he is going to get. All right, also, subscribe to Chat Sports here in terms of our 49ers only channel. We're trying to get to 12,000 subscribers, maybe by Christmas, maybe by the new year. We're at like 10,200 and something right now, so if you don't subscribe or you have not subscribed yet, click the red subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate that. All right, again, we always do running backs. I'm guessing I'm going to pick Moster, who... Gets a B minus, and yet I'm barely going to talk about Mostert. He was fine. He had a nice 16-yard touchdown run. And he had a uh, the 53 total yards, 4.8 yards per carry. Fine. But those are the stat lines that you need whenever you have a number two back who also has 10 carries for 60 yards and a touchdown as well. Matt Breida, zero carries. Tevin Coleman, five, six carries overall. Breida has to be hurt. And I don't know if, if this has been said, and I just have missed it, that he's Still dealing with his past injuries and then the ankle and the knee, but I don't know what is going on. Matt Breida looked healthy on the sideline. They panned the camera to him a couple times, and he still is not out there. I am worried about Matt Breida. I think the injury is worse than people are saying because if he was healthy, he would be out there. I don't think this is like a he fell from grace situation. I think he's just injured, and they're worried about using him. Mostert's fine. He gets a B-, minus, but where's Coleman? Where's Breida? I would like to know. Now, question for you guys here. Are you as concerned about the lack of Matt Breida as I am? Type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for no. All right, moving on here. Emmanuel Sanders. Whew, C minus. And again, if you just watched the end of the game, you said, oh, Thomas, he had the wide open catch, which got them in a field goal range. Yes, I know. Before that, two catches for like 20 yards. He's done absolutely nothing. A complete non-factor. This is a contract year for him. We've talked about re-signing him. He shows us he can have 13 catches for 100 yards and a touchdown, and then he does this. Both wide receivers in terms of him and Debo Samuel, and I guess Kendrick Bourne did not do much in this football game again. And for whatever reason, I don't know if teams are doubling Sanders, which I don't think they are because they're trying to take away George Kittle, but this just continues to be frustrating that we made the trade for Emmanuel Sanders. He's shown flashes of being great, and yet... When you have three catches for 61 yards on six targets, and the really the only reason you had 61 yards because 46 of them came during a complete boat blown coverage by the safety for the Rams. It's like, dude, Emmanuel, wake up a little bit, please. We need you to be bigger than three catches, and hopefully he's able to do that going forward. Before we move on, I know Christmas is almost here. If you still have some last-minute deals you need to get done, chatsports.com slash 49 sale, all the great 49er gear that you could possibly want, Nike hats, scarves, like everything is there. Chatsports.com slash 49 sale. Okay, um, 
I was gonna do an individual offensive lineman. I'm gonna do the whole offensive line here. C minus, we already talked about it. Six sacks of Jimmy Garoppolo. I know we're missing Richburg a ton, and I get that. I know you're playing Fowler and Clay Matthews and Aaron Donald and they're ballers, but at the same time, we are lucky that Jimmy Garoppolo did not have an even worse night than he did being sacked six times with that defensive front. They gotta start shoring things up. Garland's gotta start playing better, and all of them as a whole cannot keep giving up sacks. I think they gave up three last week, six this week. It's a lot more than they were giving up earlier on. I know that it's Richburg being out. That's a big factor. But at the same time, whoo, scary right now. They are, they are, they are concerning. They definitely miss Weston Richburg as I miss him very much as well. Defensive grades here really quickly. Individually, Akella Witherspoon. I know I'm being harsh. Am I being harsh right now? To me, it was like, I thought they were going to lose a game. Like, I was really worried, like, man, we're going to lose this game. And then they won, and I'm super excited, but I'm going back and remembering all the things that made me think they were going to lose the game. And Akello Witherspoon is one of them. He gets a D-. minus. He was getting abused all night long on the outside. Robert Woods had a field day. He had, like, 117 yards. Higby had 104. I know he's a tight end, but still he's out there as a wide receiver, just like George Kittle is. I don't know if you need to start putting Emmanuel Mosley back into Witherspoon's spot because Mosley played there earlier on in the year. But Witherspoon and people on Twitter were agreeing with me. Like uh, a couple of the big ESPN guys, a couple of people watching the game, the professionals out there in terms of like the ex-players were also saying that Witherspoon was getting abused on the outside. Secondary's got to be shorn up. I don't know if we overhyped the secondary early on because the defensive line was getting so many sacks or if it's vice versa, whatever it was, not as good as I would have hoped. Witherspoon has got to get a lot better. Finally, and I want to pick on Greenlaw too much, the rookie linebacker, because he's been filling in for Kwan Alexander and been doing a really good job. He gets a B-. minus, Nine tackles, zero sacks, obviously zero quarterback hits. He wasn't really rushing the passer there. He's just trying to be a linebacker in space and making tackles. He was good, but it still seems like he's getting lost in zone coverage just a little bit too much. And Higby, again, we talked about his big day, 104 yards. A little bit of that, excuse me, is because of Greenlaw. It just seems like when he's bailing out into zone coverage, he can be lost in his zones a little bit. And is having to recover when the ball's already been thrown. So I like what Greenlaw's been doing. I know he's not Kawan Alexander. I know he's a rookie and all this stuff. But we're going to the playoffs now. we got to start shoring things up just a little bit tighter. And his... Uh, his, his, his struggle in pass coverage is a little bit of a concern for me. All right, overall grade. What, what would you guys give the 49ers as an overall grade? Let me know down below. Grade the win. A, B, C, D, E, not E, F, wherever you guys want to go with the grades. It's late right now on a Saturday as I'm trying to get this content for you guys here as quickly as possible. Again, I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just trying to be honest in the 34-31 win over the Rams. It's just there was a lot wrong. And yet they still have the mental, you know, toughacity essentially to be able to fight back in these football games and get the big win. 12-3, and three, you do your business next week, you beat Seattle, you'll be the number one overall seed, and the NFC will have to go through Levi Stadium, which is huge, as we all know. So, Jimmy Garoppolo, less interceptions, offensive line, less sacks, secondary, figure it out, defensive line, can we get a couple of sacks, please? Matt Breida, are you hurt? What's going on, Earth to Matt Breida? All the questions that I had, but I'll leave with this. Congratulations on the win. Yes, I want to congratulate you, the fans, as well. Me to you, congratulations. We keep winning football games. 12 wins in a season is hard to do. And we earned it, and we deserved it. One more next week. We'll see what the games do on Sunday. Obviously, you've probably seen this on Sunday. We'll see what the games do this afternoon. And then we'll get ready for the Seahawks coming up here in a week at, at uh, Century Links Field, Century Link Stadium. We can beat them. Number one overall seat. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott signing off after the 34-31 win over the Rams. Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott. See you guys later.